Hey everyone, it's your girl Maddie here, aka Beaver Moss, and today I am joined by Tony of Sonata Arctica, whose latest record, Clear Cold Beyond, is coming out on March 8th on Atomic Fire Records. Tony, thank you so much for joining me today. How are we doing today? Doing great. It's fairly cold here today. Not as cold as yesterday, though, so it's it's good. Minus 15 Celsius. Yesterday was minus 30. So, <laughs> yeah, well, it's, chilly it's, times. But, yeah, it's, it's cold winter. here, too, but not as cold as that. Uh, wow. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, to start off, for those who are familiar with your music, Sonata Arctica, people who have been following your band for a while, what will this album offer that they are familiar with? And in what ways do you think this may be different than perhaps what your listeners have heard on previous records? Well, um, people have been telling us the same thing. We have told them that this is our return to our power metal roots, mm -hmm. both song-wise, the musical content of the album is, is what it's supposed to be by all those people who have been crying out for, why is it Son of Arctica like power metal like they used to be? This is <laughs> it. And also sound-wise, uh, we went back to the original gangster, Mikko Karmila of Finnwalk Studios, yeah. and I had him mix the album, so it it's also sounds the way it is supposed to sound like. So, yeah. Yeah, and that's a great segue, because I wanted to ask you about Mikko Karmila, who has done a number of, of records for you, including Ecliptica back in 99, and he has worked with so many power metal bands, including Stradivarius, Ed Guy, Avantasia, and many others. What does he bring that gives it give power metal that sound? I don't know. He's a legend. He he created that thing back uh, back in like I think mid nineties with uh, Stradivarius, mm -hmm. and as their their album sounded like the thing, you know, yeah. everybody started swarming towards Mikko Carmila, Nightwish ourselves and 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 such like that and so forth so he, he did everybody back in a day <laughs> yeah and he, he's, he's been working with i don't know which bands he's actually worked recently aside from nightwish but i, I was very happy he's still uh, allowed us to use his services and was willing to have us back there because you know i know that he's been cutting down work quite a bit lately and then you know picking his fight so to say <laughs> more more <laughs> yeah so, so, so it was great to go back there and he, he just knows his stuff knows how he's, he's got the experience experience yes. it's needed to to make things sound the way it's supposed to sound yeah he has done so many fantastic records Absolutely. well yeah i i'm a metalhead here in the united states and i want to ask because it seems like your subgenre power metal doesn't land with an American audience as much as it does in in Europe where you are. And even though I think that's maybe changing a little, do you have any insight as to why maybe that's the case? Really? I, I don't know. It's it's big thing in, in Europe, in Latin America, yeah, and in Japan and such places. I, I think, well, maybe it's too, it's not hard enough, not heavy enough for you guys mm -hmm. or something. I don't know. It's 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 funny thing, but ah, it is what it is. Would love to have a huge success in North America and tour there all the time. Yeah, but you know, but you know, maybe that is in the cards in the future. Who knows? If we now manage to unite all the some of the Arctic fans in the country, there are plenty, but they are divided all over the place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so <laughs> maybe maybe we will find the old fans back and 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 bunch of new ones alongside yeah. them and uh, you know it's it's hard to say why this is but you probably know better than i do it's 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 i would guess that it has something to do with whatever bands have hit big there in states and then people the kids have grown up listening to certain type of thing that has been big at the time any band yeah. that is a little bit heavier so it's it's a generational thing as well and, yeah you know there are so many different genres of metal these days but it's really hard, hard to say. And then, then power metal being probably from the softest side of things. Yeah. So <laughs> it's it's power metal. I, I would imagine it's it's kind of a gate gateway metal in a way that it's it's if you are into pop music or whatever, this is the easiest type of metal music to get into. 
sure. and then move forward to harder stuff if you wish. So it's it's a gateway drug yeah. to metal music, I'd say. So it, it, it works. It has a purpose, definitely. Yeah, it's interesting because, like, I think here in the states, and maybe that that gateway is thrash or even death metal. Death metal has gotten very yeah. popular here, but I don't know. Blind Guardian is is touring in the states next year, and it seems to be selling. So I think I think uh, I think power metal is is getting its its due here in the states. Finally, so. I hope so. I hope yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you guys have been making power metal for over two decades now, and what keeps it exciting and fresh and something that you want to keep doing how you've been doing it for this long no uh, well uh, we never were the purest form of power metal if you compare us to let's say dragon force for example we sure. are you can't can't even call us power metal and that's why I, I in a way i've been a little bit reluctant to uh operate under that monocle you know power metal that title yeah. because uh i i heard from so many power metal bands that some of the Arctic are not power metal and I'm, I'm, i have a tendency to believe them because we have so much more different styles and only few songs on each album that are like power metal like really really mm-hmm. power metal then we have ballads and, and mid-tempo stuff and and a little bit more artistic stuff as well on the albums and uh well definitely you know we do have the power metal side but there's there's so much more to some antarctica which is not necessarily a good thing because we are hard to market because of that that we are just all over the place at times but definitely you know it was the easiest title to market us under back in the day when we started in 99 2000 and uh, there were other power metal bands that were really big at the time so it was easy to compare these young guys to those older yeah. geezers who were doing it already. And, and so so we jumped the band train in that way and, and, and then just made the whole thing our own. And it was uh, fun to do for a long, long time. And then I think after our fourth album and the long, super long tour that we had, it, I, I had, had with it, I, I sort of felt a little bit burned out. I've analyzed it, uh, you know, afterwards that, that that's probably what happened. I didn't just realize it realized it and, and and I started writing material that probably should have ended up on some kind of side solo project or something like Unia album. It has so much material that is not really Sonata Arctica like mm-hmm. at all. So and it got like some weird eyes and, and comments, definitely. And uh, we started sort of drifting back and forth after Unia album stylistically. And uh, with Quite a few albums in between uh, Unia and and Clear Cold Beyond. I've told people that now the next album we are gonna go back into our power metal roots, and to an extent we have done that in some albums. There are uh, on every album there is at least one song that can be categorized as as power metal and and is fitting for like sort of the same album <laughs> in a way. If mm-hmm. you just make one album out of some of the Arctica songs, so uh, uh, but but but. Uh, still the balance between the weird stuff and the like on the point power metal stuff has been totally off for a long long time and now finally after releasing two acoustic albums and yeah. our previous studio album of 1919 uh, Talvi are turning out way softer than we actually even intended uh it was time to do some changes we had our 25th anniversary tours festivals and, and also the tour last year with a uh, story version of Rhapsody and, and especially those festival runs that we had. And when we were playing the old power metal Sonata Arctica stuff, it allowed us to see the fans, how they react to the old Sonata Arctica. And, yeah. and they were having so much fun and we got so much energy from the people and realized that oh, these people are still there for us and they want to hear this kind of stuff. And it was so much fun to do yeah. that we felt that this is going to be the core of our band in the future and we're just going to build and uh, write new stuff around that and that sparked the idea to go back and and do album like clear cold beyond which is mostly power metal now the balance is right i think because we can't be just a full album uh, one album like full album uh uh of of, of power metal like straightforward stuff yeah. we need the more artsy uh, side to it as well because th- those adventures have their own 
fans as well, and yeah. uh, we have to please everybody. But still, we are now on the right track. <laughs> yeah, and I've heard the record, and yeah, you are correct. It is very, very much a power metal record. Um, it has the big hooks, but it has the heavy guitars. Now, you said something that I agree with and I kind of disagree with. Um, you compared yourself to Dragon Force, and I love Dragon Force, and you're right. You are not the same type of band as they are, but they are a different flavor of power metal, I would say, where they are more yeah. into the, the big shredding guitars, and, and they're more about you know being this big riff-centric band, where you are more of a kind of about the hooks and, and the storytelling, not saying that they don't have that, yeah. but I think you know, there are two interpretations of power metal that I think are equally valid, and I I, I appreciate both takes yeah. on it. Yeah, I think like uh, Dragon Force is the extreme side, and we are the opposite. We are the emotional side of power metal. Sure. I, I understand that. That's, that's a good point, actually, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I was wondering if I could ask you personally, what was your introduction to metal music or power metal and when and how did it hit for you? Uh, I think it was 1996 or seven. It's getting, yeah. it was so such a long time ago and I was 21, 22 years old at the time when uh, Stradivarius, they released their Visions album. And funny story, I, uh, the, their previous album, album episode our ex bass player at the time, he he uh, put that CD on my car player, CD player, and I hated it. It was just <laughs> like I'm going to toss this fucking thing out through the window. It was just awful. I could not bear listening to that shit. And then one year later, I uh, I get business and something twists, something happens, and I yeah. I'm head over heels in love with the band and and their music and everything and. Thank God. Well, I wouldn't be talking here with you or anybody else, you know, wouldn't be doing this for a living, probably. You mm -hmm. never know, but but at least not in this way. And and, and, and uh, that's that's when I fell in love with metal music. And I was pretty like uh, one track mind with, with, with what I love in power metal, and that was Stradivarius. Yeah. Then I slowly, slowly started finding new bands around that thing, like Nightwish, and then eventually moving on to Cradle of Filth and such bands. And then lately, my biggest love in metal music has been Devin Townsend. He's just doing all sorts of things. And Fantastic, yeah. Wow, what a singer. What a vocalist. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> well, Stradivarius' Visions is an incredible, it's a classic for a reason. But that what interests me about what you just said is that, like, you said you got into metal in 97, and then you put out Ecliptica in 99. So it was like a quick turnover for you. Yeah. You know, you got into it and you must have got yeah. obsessed and then you made a power metal record. Yeah, of course, you know, we do fall in love with something. And then when you have a hobby band, it is yeah. fairly easy to start, you know, try to go into that direction and see if you can actually play their songs, first of all, and yeah. then maybe maybe write songs in the same vein yourself. And, and it turned out pretty well. I forced our drummer, Tommy, to learn the double kicks and everything. So, <laughs> so yeah. it turned out really well. And and, and with the first, we had, at that point, I think we had, released three demos and our fourth one was the one that had songs like eighth commandment and 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 such so and which got us the recording contract then so it it was it was luck you never know if we hadn't had a friend of ours send the demo to spine farm records and who gave us the deal then if that hadn't happened i i don't know what I I might we might be a reggae band for all I know <laughs> <laughs> because I I, I ultimately I, I love all sorts of music and then it's yeah. not I'm just I'm not your purest metalhead I come from different style of music love and an upbringing as well I was listening to whatever my parents were listening to for a long long time and then found Queen and then uh, mid eighties and and Midnight Oil and such bands. Mm -hmm. pretty far from metal per se like more like hard rock that was the hardest yeah. thing i was listening to but but it's good that you have something to learn and and find when you're a little bit older so don't worry if you don't like metal and you're 15 you may find it later it's, it's, you may it's all find good. it <laughs> yeah well yeah so like i i know you 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 guys started as i think it was called tricky means right it was a it was a it was more of like a of a rock band and then so did you have any idea when you started this band that you would be making a career making metal music? No, it was a, <laughs> it was a dream. With with 
uh, played local shows and like yeah. this uh, band uh, competitions and such around here and uh, and once even played in Rovaniemi which is like 100 kilometers little less than 100 miles away from <laughs> our hometown which is a long stretch for us yeah. <laughs> so, so that, that <laughs> is crazy uh, and, but no we really didn't dream that we would be you know, good enough to do any any such things and everybody had we were in school and studying and whatnot and it was just a hobby until all of a sudden it was not anymore so yeah but you we ever... just went forward where whatever was thrown our way we just okay let's do this and okay wow this is we weren't prepared to do this but let's go and do it and it was fun happy we what... did it well you say um you started as you started as as a hobby, and and I've heard from people who say that like when they have a hobby, and all of a sudden they're monetizing off it, they sometimes wish that they can just go back to it being a hobby. Does, do you ever feel that way? Yes, absolutely. You know, it's yeah. very hard to sit behind a my keyboard or pick up a guitar and just yeah. play around. You fairly quickly notice that you are writing something or trying yeah. to come up with new ideas. AKA you are working. Yeah. So it's, 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 uh, yeah, you lose something, but then you know, there are other hobbies you can have. And it's sure. also fun. I do love my work. It's a, it's a work and hobby in, in the same package, but still it's not like the purest form of having a hobby anymore, but yeah. I'm not complaining. I can have, I, I play computer games, for example. I love them. So it's, it's, it's a good hobby to have as well. Yeah, what are you? I I I love them too. What what are you playing right now? Right now, my biggest thing is Volheim. Okay, Viking I've heard game. of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I played it with my 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 dad. Yeah, and my son. Actually, we have three generations of of people playing that game, and it's 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 a lot of fun to run around there and kill the beasts. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I might need to try it. I've heard great things. Right now, I am uh, as. A lot of people I am obsessed with Baldur's Gate 3. Great RPG. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you have a tour in Finland following the release of this record. And now I have to ask are there yeah. any shows or festivals planned outside of that for 2024? Uh, well, uh, at, at the end of that finished leg of that, the tour, we are pretty close to the summer festival season. So there will be no other, other shows until. I think in May. Okay. And then summer festivals all over Europe and uh, the European tour starts in September sometime. The dates will be released, I would imagine, around the time, same time with the album. And uh, then next year is totally open still, but we'll be touring. Hopefully, uh, I would love to come to North America and tour there, at least do something like 70,000 tons of metal or something, whatever. Yeah. Anything just to come there and then and, and see the fans and, and be present there and, and bring the new Son of the Arctic Power Metal era back there and show what we are and then hopefully open some doors for us to come and play an actual real tour. Yeah. It has become increasingly difficult the last few years, I've heard. We haven't played there in a while, but already in 19, uh, 19 I mean, it was it was already a little bit more expensive everything yeah uh, and uh, i i've heard that it's not it hasn't gotten any easier financially bus and 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 and, and fuel and everything is more expensive and then there are certain things that you just you can't just put it in the price of the ticket because people right. can't, can't afford to come and see the show anymore in some point so it, it's a little bit of pain in, pain in the ass for a band our size because uh, we just you know Recently, at least with the style we were playing before, <laughs> this power metal <laughs> thing, you know, we didn't get enough people to see the shows, yeah. uh, and and it's it's like spending seven weeks touring the the, the uh, region and area we love. I love touring North America. It's it's my favorite place. Oh, the bus and everything, the atmosphere and so much to see there. Yeah. But after such a long tour, when you go home with a with a bill to pay. It, it is it is not a pleasant thing at all when this is actually what you make your living with. Of course, yeah, I've 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 heard this a lot, and I'm always surprised when a when a when a band from Europe comes here and, and tours, and I go see him, and it's great, but it's not a full room. Like, how you're are you actually making any money off this? This must be like you're just doing it for the fans, and that's great, but it's like, oh, huh, that must hurt. 
Yeah, it, it, yeah, but still, look, I, I, it's it's not all about money. I, I'm yeah. willing to take a minus, not overly big, but but yeah. still, it's it's okay for me because I love touring there, and yeah. it's fantastic to see the fans and 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 and, and, and it's like a, a traveling vacation in many ways. Sure. And uh, just 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 love it there, and it, it's okay. I don't I don't care as long as it's affordable. Do you have a favorite and, city and... <laughs> you love playing in the in North America? Uh, it's very hard to say. Not really. Yeah. And I'm not sure if it's even fair to say, but there are certain cities that are fun to go to always. Of course. But my most most favorite thing is to go into a place that I have never seen before, or in a city we've been before, but I already have in mind that I now I'm going to see something that I haven't seen something in the city a, a, a place or whatever i would love to go to vegas las vegas and and, and actually like see Grand canyon or something like that which yeah. is <laughs> something i've missed but uh, i've seen a lot of things but they're like gazillion things i would love to still do and maybe one day go on like a vacation type road trip across the continent that of would course. be a dream well tony looks like we are running a little we are kind of hitting that time but um i want to thank you again for joining me this was a great conversation um and for everyone watching at home uh look out for the new son of arctica record clear cold beyond coming out march 8th and hey my name is maddie aka beaver and i am signing off